Butcher. Originally released in October 2016 via Polish indie developer Phobia Game Studio, it's an experience that- Shit, shit. Fuck off. Fucking die already. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Shit. Ah, fuck. Ah, you motherfucker. It, it's one of those games. Okay, so I've admittedly been a tad neglectful in regards to keeping the game roster nice and varied over the last few months. Limbo, Fate of Matula, Occulto, these have all been very exploration heavy, atmospheric titles and such primarily focused on the vibe of the experience, as opposed to the literal gameplay of the, uh, game. And now there's obviously nothing wrong with that kind of thing. I love atmospheric games, so much so that I often wonder if my freakishly intense enjoyment of them does in fact warrant an appropriately clinical diagnosis. Well, whatever. The point is, I couldn't help but notice that it's been three goddamn months since I last covered something that was a little bit more gameplay focused. Shrine was fun, Conquest was dumb, and now that Limbo is firmly out of the way, I figured it would be a pretty good time to shake things up a bit. So ladies and gentle spectres, meet Butcher, an indie action title from the mid 2010s with the following tagline neatly attached. The easiest mode is hard. This is a game that wants to frustrate you. I like it very much. And I also kind of hate it. Which is a reaction that I suspect the dev team were sort of going for. That's gonna come kill me, isn't it? Yep. Oh no! <laughs> Alrighty. For those of you familiar with the channel, you might find the overall visual style of Butcher somewhat familiar. And you might also recognize the name Phobia Game Studio. Yep, these are the same people behind Carrion, that wonderfully gnarly 2D pixel horror game in which you essentially take control of John Carpenter's The Thing. A creature clearly not from this fine world of ours, but one that was born with the sole intention of turning various homo sapien body parts into varying portions of meat paste. And you know what's funny? Butcher really isn't all that different of an experience. Okay, yeah, sure, you're not exactly controlling a psychotic lump of killer jelly, but the overall tone and hilariously violent means of dismantling your enemies throughout Butcher makes what Carrion eventually became four years after the release of Butcher from 2016 to 2020 a lot of sense. In fact, in many ways, Butcher is easily the genesis idea of the beast that Carrion would grow into. You can feel the DNA of Phobia Game Studios' favourite evil little fucker spliced throughout each and every nook and cranny of its predecessor, and often to equally gruesome and satisfying effects. As you've probably noticed by now from some of the footage, this game is absolutely rife with an assortment of over-the-top means to eviscerate your enemies. From shotgun blasts splattering enemy innards into the wall, to chainsaw action that often ends with a kind of office massacre that Skull Kid would be proud of, and a flamethrower that tends to be a hell of a lot more effective than you might expect. So long as you don't set yourself on fire in the process of using it. So in essence, Butchery is nothing more or less than a full-blown love letter to the classic 2D arcade shooters, taking what made you Contras, Metal Slugs and Gunstar Heroes so enjoyable, and basically just dumping a bucket of blood and guts all over them. And if I'm being honest, I don't really need to tell you much else. This is one of those games that easily speaks for itself after barely 15 to 30 seconds of gameplay, but if I had to sum it all up, what you've effectively got here is an experience entirely focused on a streamlined combination of run and gun shoot 'em upping with the very occasional instance of puzzle platforming. And also maybe a little bit of bullet hell tomfoolery, I guess? And uh, yeah, that's the game. There's not much in the way of an obvious story here, character dialogue is non-existent, the general structure of the game is pretty much your standard arcade fare of working through each biome on a level by level basis, be it either factories, cities, molten lava pits and so forth. It's straightforward and to the point, which ultimately works to Butcher's favour. You don't need hours of text based tough guy dialogue to get what this dude is all about. He's essentially a 2D doom guy, 
And boy oh boy, does he have a bee in his bonnet when it comes to killing things. Especially when said things have a real severe tendency of killing you. So, for the record, because I do feel that it's important to state this up front, I didn't heed Phobia Game Studios' warning of how much this game wants to punish you, because a part of me honestly didn't believe them. I always aim for the midpoint difficulty when playing a game, which is usually classed as normal, not too difficult, and conversely, not too easy. I want to feel challenged without artificially changing the set parameters of the game such as your maximum health or damage dealt by enemies and so forth, you get the idea. And by sticking to that midpoint difficulty, it also helps me out when gauging whether or not a game is a bit too much of a free ride when compared to others of a similar genre. This is why you might sometimes hear me whinging about the fact that a game should be played on hard as opposed to normal. It's because by comparison to other titles within the spectrum, that particular game's normal difficulty might as well be labelled easy. It's too much of a free ride. So with this in mind, as opposed to hard, I played Butcher on the midpoint selection, harder, with my thought process being that the dev team might have just been screwing around or playing up the game's overly violent content. I didn't want to select hard and then realise it was just easy with another name being stamped over the top of it. However, when it comes to Butcher, Phobia Game Studio very much lived up to their promise of the game's difficulty. So if you hate hard games, play this game on hard. As an overall experience, hard mode is a little bit more streamlined, it's certainly more forgiving, and if you're the kind of person to get frustrated when stuck in the same area, well, you're gonna have a whole lot less of that. But with that being said, I do firmly believe that the middle ground difficulty is arguably the more rewarding experience, because Butcher is, by sheer definition of its nature, a very satisfying game. For starters, the sound design is absolutely stellar, from the slamming impact of gunfire, to the screams of enemies catching fire, to the surrounding environmental design throughout tunnels, hallways and so on. It all sounds as appropriately gritty and chaotic as you would expect from a game like this. Getting through virtually any combat encounter is almost bound to put a triumphant smile on your face, and a big part of how good that feels is due to the sound design itself. But to now focus on the gameplay, as the quote unquote story progresses, it can't help but be noticed how much the game essentially works itself into a manic frenzy as the stakes gradually increase, and often to the point of completely overwhelming the player if you haven't taken the necessary steps needed to deal with them. For example, you'll run out of ammo pretty damn quickly if you haven't actively retrieved the disappearing shells and rockets from enemy soldiers you've recently killed which will then soon teach you how damn ineffective a chainsaw can be when faced with a man holding a machine gun. Now, to take a step back and look at things from a slightly more critical point of view, while it's fair to say that Butcher is fun and I like it a lot, I'd be remiss if I didn't admit that it's not the most memorable of experiences. The level design is at times outright beautiful, but it mostly cements itself in the dull monotony of greys and browns, underground layers, cement splattered buildings, gloomy jungles, that sort of thing. And this is fine for the initial structure of four short levels per biome, which does keep things moving at a fairly brisk pace, but if you do find yourself getting stuck in one particular area due to the game's rather unforgiving nature, you'll soon grow pretty damn tired of it. On the flip side, while Butcher's Arsenal is versatile enough and if truth be told a lot of fun to use, the kickback from projectile weaponry feels weighty in the same manner that Carrion's shoot em up segments do, the previously mentioned more bombastic weaponry such as flamethrowers, grenade launchers and the awesome as fuck railgun are all massively entertaining, you just can't help but shake the feeling that it's all pretty standard fare. Sure, this was early days for Phobia Game Studio, Carrion is a far more elaborate game by comparison, but considering the effort that was absolutely poured into making the action of Butcher such an enjoyably batshit gore fest, it feels like a missed opportunity that the weaponry isn't more elaborate. This is clearly a futuristic setting, especially when considering the drone manufacturing at the start of the game, the space station central hub and the railgun itself, so why not throw in more sci-fi orientated weaponry? Phobia Game Studio have effectively proven themselves a perfect indie dev for this sort of thing. Like, think about the wacky guns of District 9, or hell, even some of the more alien weapons of Doom. Butcher's iteration of these could be a really damn good time. It's sort of a shame that there isn't more of that. 
However, with this all being said, I do honestly love how practical the gore can be. Not only can you blind fire into the floors above you if you happen to suspect an enemy might be lurking around, you can also take a moment to appreciate a nice refreshing shower in the pouring blood that splatters on top of your head when you do actually manage to kill someone. Is that a sentence that can have me committed? Oh, and uh, just to throw it out there, the music is fucking amazing. Calling on even more John Carpenterisms, much of the soundtrack is pure 80s synthy goodness. It's the perfect companion piece for a game so deeply rooted in retro aesthetics and design. So to round off this one, while I definitely had a good time with Butcher, I think the best part of this whole affair is the simple fact that what makes Butcher an initially fun experience is in turn what then fed into making Carrion a great experience. There was clearly a lot of internal improvement on Phobia Game Studios part when it came to carrying over the DNA of Butcher into what would eventually grow into Carrion. But if you fancy trying out their initial release that certainly served as a beta idea for that game, I'd argue that it's still well worth a try. So yeah, give Butcher a go when you're next in the mood for a shoot 'em up. It's fun, it's bloody, it's hard as fuck at times. I enjoyed my time with it and I hope you might too. As always, I want to thank my amazing followers on Patreon for their continued support. In particular, the highest tiers, Game Master, Darkraptor86, BFD Survivor, and Shikotsky. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next review.